Across the UK, thousands of grandparents, aunts, uncles, siblings and family friends have been left to care for children because their birth parents are no longer able to. When I grew up and you wanted them to go into care, which is where they would have ended up if I couldn't take them or the other nana couldn't take them. These people are known as kinship carers. In the UK alone, there are 300,000 children living with kinship carers, with alcohol and drug misuse being the most common cause of kinship care arrangements. When I had my children, I was 20 years younger, so it's quite hard to think because of my age, but they keep you young, I think, they keep you on your toes. If they go into care, they might never see them for years, and there's no saying that they want to come and find us. You don't ever call me mum, because they've already got a mum. It's always Nana, you know, when Faith was little she used to say, Mum may have said, no, I'm Nana. I'm just, oh, Nana, you know, unless she got used to it now, she don't even bother now. Kelsey seems to get it in her head when she's told she will live with her mum, but I can't say it happening. <laughs> she's just one of her little dreams. So she's heard her mum talking, I think, and I said, no, you can't do that. They're with me till I think they're 16. Time is going so fast anyway, before you, oh, Callum starts a big school this time. Um, so. They will always be children, and the time just go quick. We'd love to go to live in Cyprus, but it's a pipe dream, I think, but it's a nice thought. <laughs> Carers are fighting every day for more support for them and their children. The main source of support for kinship carers are local charity-run support groups where people talk to other families and alleviate the isolation felt by so many of them. I went to a Kinship Carers UK group meeting in Worcester to talk to carers and learn what emotional and practical support they receive. I am a Kinship Carer myself and when I took on my second grandchild um, I was offered this SGO without an explanation of what an SGO was. Um, so I asked if I could speak to somebody who could tell me about the legalities of SGOs and residence orders. I was put in touch with the family rights group and uh, this lovely lady came along and um, said would you like to run a support group because there's nothing at this end of the world because she's from London so that's how it started I just left the doors open and people just poured in we have guest speakers in on specific issues that come across during the meetings so most of them are, are based on attachment and the needs that the children have um, from there we've expanded not only to just the support group on a monthly basis but we do a starting a kinship youth group because the children are missing out at school on the protective behaviours and they have far many more issues than the normal children have that are brought up with parents. So in order to cover those areas we've started a youth group so we can work with both carers and the children I've made a new group of friends because when you become a kinship carer, most of your friends at our age, their children have grown up, so you you have to have another network of friends because you, your friends tend to leave. They don't want to be in an environment where you, you've got children. So um, this is a new network of friends, friendships now. Um, we're all in it together. So that's it. That's that's the support group gave to me because when I when I first met um, my colleague and fr and some of the colleagues that come here is because we're at our lowest ebb so when you're feeling that you're lowest you do you're desperate for something to help you and social workers aren't it you have to find another way it's just knowing that you're not alone and that you can talk about your issues and mostly someone else is going through a very similar thing so you, and um, and to get people in that can professionals in that can advise us and show us different paths and different networking and flag point, you know, point us in the right direction to get the support for our children and to get the support for us as carers. Children that are fostered or adopted get a social worker, they get family support workers, they get lots of different um, areas of support. But as a kinship carer and kinship carer children, they don't get any support. 
Charities that work with kinship families say the children don't get the support they need despite having been through similar traumas to those in the care system. Adopted or fostered children are often given immediate access to physical and emotional support services, whilst kinship children are left on long waiting lists. Most kinship carers are struggling to make ends meet, with three out of four carers suffering severe financial hardship. A quarter of those are grandparents, relying on their pension as their main source of income. What the government has done, they've left it to local authority and giving it to local authority means that they budget their own. So each town um, offers different things for kinship care and support. So um, my granddaughter was in a different town to, to this one and um, the package was a little bit better than what I would have received up here. But to, for me to tap into this authority now, I have to wait three years and a day from the time I got my special guardianship order, which is now up, and I've actually now contacted them because I want to see what support is out there for me. But I'm not holding out a great deal of hope. Why doesn't mummy love me? Is it my fault? What have I done to deserve this? Yes. Why? Why doesn't? Why has mummy chosen him, this bad man, and not me? Why has she chose him and not my brother? In fact, I've got little letters where she's wrote to mummy, yeah. but never wants me to send them. Mm. But she's written them saying, mummy. Did you love Daddy? That's therapy. Yeah, but you see, he can't write that because, because, he, because, because, she's because he knows yeah. that she's gone. it's a definite yeah. cut-off, there's nothing else, yeah. so he can't do any of that. Well, you but see, for Tasha, it's very different because her mum is there and does love her, yeah. and she knows her mum loves her, so yeah. she's, she's a bit split, she sees yeah. a lot of both of us, but because of Lucy's Asperger's, you know, it's a shame that she didn't get more support when yeah. she lived with her mum. Yeah. So... It, it, she's, we keep telling her she's got two bones and we're trying to make it more half and half. It's going to be a long time. But she's starting to stay overnight a little bit more. But she finds that strange. You know, she's yeah. saying, why am I living here? Mummy loves me, yeah. I love Mummy, why am but, I here? But when you think you that know? all of their children have got one thing in common, mm. and that's support. Yeah. The backup. Yeah. They're not, we get them. Not they're, not them. Them. they're not in social care, they're no. not going from no. one family to another. No. They've, got a, stable, they've got a stable home. And people. And people. Mm. That's right, yeah. They've helped me in the fact that, um, as I've said before, that we're all part of a big team now. But from, from my granddaughter's point of view, she's, she's met other kin kids. So she's not, she's not on her own either. She's not isolated. She knows this... Um, you know, the 2.2 family, that's supposed to be normal. There's lots of other different family dynamics and she's realised that there are other kinship care children too. So that makes her feel normal. If we can help the carers, help the children, then we can stop the cycle from happening again. And that's, that's my long-term goal. Long-term goal is to help set up any support group, whoever wants to set one up, help them set it up for the right reason and to help people, because that's what the aim of our group is. So the future is just to carry on and meet up with lots more kinship carers and make it feel a normal part of the children's lives and the carers' lives, rather than just something that nobody knows about. Whichever party gets into Parliament need to do something for kinship carers. They are a forgotten majority. I mean, there are between 200 and 300,000 children that are being looked after and there are a lot of people that aren't registered as looked after children, a lot of children under the radar and if these people could get the help without having to run to social services then it'll be fantastic. What's the funniest thing Nana and Grandad do? When they sit down they miss the seats and they land on the pump. So, oopsie daisy. Why do you like living with Nana and Grandad? Because of my family.